Same with my M1 Mac. This is the MacBook Air M1 2020 with 8 GB of RAM. In this video, I'm going to run a couple of apps which are iOS apps. One is an iPad ready app, the other is only an iPhone app, and we'll see how the M1 Mac handles them. So let's go. First, I will show you an app which is called Sky Guide. It's one of my favorite apps on the iPad or the iPhone especially. And uh, this is this is the uh, the iOS version. This is not a special Mac version. And as you can see, it comes up quite nicely. Um, it's showing the night sky, as you can imagine. It's an astronomy uh, app. And uh, it's working quite well. I'm able to sort of uh, pan around the sky, look at various objects, just as I would on the iPhone. Now, how do I control it? Uh, if I go to Sky Guide, and this is true for every single iOS app that you try to run <clears throat> on an M1 Mac, you go into the application and its preferences, and you will get this, something called Touch Alternatives. You have to be on the latest Mac version for this, but then you will get the Touch Alternatives. And as you can see, there's plenty of uh, controls available. You just drag simply by scrolling uh, on, the, uh, on, 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 your, on your touchpad. Um, the cursor keys are swipes. Uh, the spacebar is a tap in the center of the screen and if you hold down the option key and then drag uh, on the uh, on the touchpad then it becomes a multi-touch and I'll just show you that to you in a minute and the WASD keys are for tilt if, if some games require it although I don't think this would be used all that much so these are the touch alternatives and if I now demonstrate them to you so right now I'm not holding down the option key I'm just swiping on the screen and it's working as I would expect it to work um, exactly. Now I'm going to hold down the option key and now if I touch the screen, um, it, it shows the touch because if I touch, as you can see, it's multi-touch now. So, you know, I'm just put down, as I put down a finger, it shows up on the screen. And the advantage of this is that now, if I want to do a, a zoom in in this particular app, it requires a two finger zoom in, uh, a pinch to zoom. And I can do that and it works perfectly well. And uh, it's a nice little touch that it shows the finger positions. So quite neat actually, you know. So I don't really need four fingers, but I'm just trying to show you how the multi -touch. So again, if I take my finger off the, if I stop pressing the option button, then it's a simple drag again. Uh, other than that, the app works almost perfectly. Uh, in fact, it does work perfectly. If I uh, click on one of the stars, I get the information for it, just as I would in uh, on the iPhone version. If I maximize it, it does become bigger. It doesn't go edge to edge as you can see. It seems to go uh, about, I think it, you can imagine it as a landscape mode, iPad dimensions. It's about the same size as well, at least visually. Uh, it's not full screen, but uh, otherwise it scales quite nicely. Uh, it looks great. By the way, it's a great app. I mean, if you are into stargazing at all, I've been using this uh, app for years. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's the first app. Let's do another app, and this time we will do something which is only available for the iPhone. So this is not uh, I, uh, iPad ready. And that is good old Pac-Man's. So I go to Pac-Man and it starts working. There we go. That's the familiar, I hope you can hear that, Pac-Man sound. Um, signed into the, uh, you know, the, uh, in, in, for playing the games, into the game center. Uh, tap to continue. I will just press the space bar, which uh, is uh, tap in the center of the screen. Uh, again, if I go to the preferences again, just to show you one more time. Again, the touch alternative this time is still there. You will see that it is only showing me the swipe controls and the drag control. That's because the game. That's because the game only uses these controls. So it's showing me the selected controls. But if I go to all controls, it will actually show me the entire uh, guide but all of these are not being used for the screen. So it just shows you the ones. So that's a nice touch, so you know, so as you don't get confused. So in this game, I will be using the cursor keys, which uh, will emulate the swipe function uh, on the touch screen of an iPhone. Also, you will notice that there's a game control section uh, because this particular game uh, does support game controllers. Now, I have not tested it myself. I actually prefer the uh, keyboard and trackpad. Don't use a game control, but you can see that everything is mapped on the X, Y buttons, R1, R2, and so on and so forth. And there are two configurations, keyboard and trackpad. In this case, R1, uh, and this button is over here. And if I go to keyboard only, and then it maps those buttons back onto the keyboard as well. So you have options for game control as well. Uh, if you're gonna leave this off, we go to touch alternatives. Again, we're gonna demonstrate the swipe button. Now I click on this and the game starts. And now I'm just playing Pac-Man. And the way it's working, oops, that did not, right. The way it's working is, 
I'm literally playing with the cursor keys. This works really well. I mean, it, it's uh, because cursor keys are so natural in, in, in keyboard play. Uh, although the original game was uh, developed for swipes, I'm just using the cursor keys and it just, oops, it just works as naturally as you would expect it to work. So it works great. So that's Pac-Man on the M1 Mac. Again, a native iPhone app running perfectly well uh, on, on, on the Mac. If I go to full screen, again, it does become bigger because, but it, obviously it has to maintain its, uh, its aspect ratio so it doesn't go edge to edge, which is fine. Now, uh, this was sort of a couple of uh, things that I had already downloaded, but if you wanna see how to download these things in the first place, let's try that. So you go to the App Store, um, you put down something, let's say, let's say Pac-Man, for example, the one that I just showed you. And there is also Pac-Man on the Mac side, you get some of these, so you get the arcade version, then you get some copycats. But if you go here, there's a tab for iPhone and iPad apps. If you go here, then you see Pac-Man right away. And uh, well, actually you have Miss Pac-Man as well. I haven't actually tried that. So <clears throat> this works quite nicely. What it does not have though, is a discover tab. So you can't go to a tab and it would show you all the apps that are available um, all the iOS apps that are available on the Mac. You'll have to enter a search, then you have to go to this tab over here and it'll show you whether your selected app is available uh, or not. Now let's try another one. So I'm gonna go with, uh, let's say Angry Birds. And again, it starts off on the Mac side. You get some copycat apps over here. And if I go here, you will see that you don't actually have uh, Angry Birds. So you have Angry Tomatoes, you got some other copycats and some similar sounding, I guess, apps. So all the apps are actually not available on the Mac App Store yet. I guess the developers have not made their apps available. Um, this might change in the future, I guess, as the developers choose to make their apps available one by one. For now, the selection is, is not complete. But the apps that are available, um, as I've just shown you, they work quite well. So that's running iOS apps on the new M1 Max. Thank you.